everyone, and welcome to the very first episode of the Develop 360 podcast. I'm your host, Marina diaz Blum. Today we have with us a very special guest. He is our board member of Land Transport, Christian Drenton. He will be sharing with us the power of positive psychology and how he experiences it each day. So let's get started with episode one, small things that can make a big difference. Hi, Christian. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today on our Develop 360 podcast. A wonderful good morning, Marina, and thanks for having me today. I very much look forward to this Shankering Conversation podcast series and particularly the subject that we discussed today. Oh, me too. Me too, because I'm a big fan of positive psychology, and I was also really excited to hear that you were passionate about it as well. So I would like to start our conversation with a two-question combo. And so question number one, for those of us that aren't familiar with what positive psychology is and the power of the happiness advantage, what is that? And question number two then is why do you think this topic is so important for us as a company right now and just as, as human beings? Why does this matter? Well, Marina, the happiness advantage is a psychology theory that shows a connection between personal happiness and professional success. The idea is simple and powerful. The happier people are, the more successful they will be. Mm. We often think of it maybe the other way around. However, positive psychology can be practiced and the happiness advantage certainly can be felt and seen for that matter in our personal and professional environments. As to why it's so important now, well, If you look at today's society, and for most part of the last 12 months, the communication and noise that we are exposed to is generally negatively biased. Yeah. With that, our minds can easily be framed and held hostage to negativity. What Mm -hmm. is important, however, for all of us to realize is that it's scientifically proven that only 10% of our mindset, only 10% of our mindset is driven by circumstances and 90% is driven by the outlook of those circumstances. It comes therefore from within. Building a positive mindset is therefore something we can practice. And yes, it is hard work, yet with small steps forward, we can go a long way. Small steps, you can think about the smile on somebody's face when he opens or she opens a conversation through teams, a a small joke, a funny picture that you look at. They don't (laughs) need to be big things. They can be very small steps, but you need to practice it day in, day out. Yeah. Well, I love that. I actually would like to tell everyone because it's, I think it's great that the second email communication that we had, you sent me a funny photo of a donkey smiling and this really made me smile. It made me laugh. So listeners, he's just not talking about it. He's living. So he's walking the talk in this. And and I think that's really fun. Positive psychology is definitely so powerful. And I think what you said, right? It's not just about the circumstance, but it's about the way that we look at it or the lens that we use that can really change our mindset. And I've certainly found myself in these kind of negative downward spirals. I mean, it happens Um, with the pandemic. It's happened with my recent move uh, to Germany. Sometimes it's happened just in life. Things go wrong um, circumstantially, right? And we can get lost in that. And the more time I've spent in that negative mental space, it's really never helped me. But when I've chosen joy and gratitude and when I've practiced these kind of positive good habits, it has really made a difference and it's made an impact. But Speaking about kind of like circumstance and maybe some weird situations where we need to be positive, how have you been experienced home office? Are you happy? Is it weird for you? Like, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, that that is pretty funny that you ask about home office. I guess the uh, not not too long ago, um, I was sitting down with my wife and having a nice conversation, and, and she looked at me somewhat desperate. So <laughs> I asked her, what's wrong? 
I guess with hindsight, I probably should have not done that. Uh, point being is that she's completely fed up with hearing me talk or listening to people that talk to me in the house for about eight to ten hours a day. No. <laughs> it doesn't matter which room I sit. Apparently, she can she can hear me everywhere. Oh. Secondly, secondly, when I I look at my uh, my home office equipment, it's definitely substandard versus the office equipment. Mm -hmm. As an example, if I take the chair that I currently sit on, it definitely does not provide the same seating support as my chair in the office. And it just increases my morning yoga time and exercise <laughs> time by another 10 minutes to get my back into better shape again. So I guess in summary, uh, Marina, it is nice, or should I say, it was nice to spend some, some more time at home because usually I'm four or five days on the road. Yeah. Yet I cannot wait to be out and about again and smell and see our shipments in terminals and connect to our people mm. physically rather than purely virtually. Yeah. Oh, me too. I am in the same chair situation at my home, and I definitely miss seeing people in person, training in person, and I don't know if I miss the smell of the terminals, to be honest, but I definitely miss the people uh, that are in our terminals and that are in our offices. I miss that a bunch, so I'm with you. Overall, I think you seem to have a very positive outlook on it, and it's important, right, um, that we choose to see the positive in these times. and how big of a difference that makes. But I think my question now to you is, do you think this is something that's maybe really natural for you? Have you always been this way? Or is this positive mindset something that you've really learned or, or had to develop? Well, I think Marina, in, in general, I tend to think that I've always been a bit more upbeat than downbeat, yet you can always do a lot better, of course. Having recently read The Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker, which I, I thoroughly enjoyed, yeah. I realized I still have quite some territory to cover as well, and I'm still learning. I think, you know, uh, the, the Chinese always say the, outer, the elder you get, the, the better you are, the more you learn, yeah. and I think that's absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah, that's really true. That's really good. I'm definitely still learning. I think all of us are on a continuous learning journey. So uh, I really, I really like that. Thank you so much. And, you know, I want to know, and I'm sure other people want to know, what are exactly these small things? What have you learned through the happiness advantage or maybe some of these positive habits that you put into practice that have made a difference? Yeah, there's many things. And, and as I started off with Marina, there, there are small things. Some of the things that I do and that, that spring to my mind whilst we're talking are, um, I, I tend to do 10 minutes meditation daily, about 20 minutes of yoga. I do frequently sport that would be probably two, three, four times a week, which include jogging, playing football. And for that matter, probably any game that I can play where a ball is involved, I get excited <laughs> and, 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 and really put my mind into obviously as important and if not more is spend time with family and, and friends, yeah. which fortunately in Spain is still by and large allowed uh, because restaurants are open. You can still mm. go out to the theater. Obviously, the theater is not full, but you can you can see it. Um, and and that that gives me energy. Um, yeah. It certainly makes me smile most of the times, and I think that is important. What would be some of the things that that you personally do, for that matter? Oh well, I wish I was allowed to go to restaurants, but I can't. I can't add that to my list right now because they're they're closed in Germany. But I really like what you shared. Those examples are so good. And I'm also with you on the yoga. Uh, I don't do 20 minutes. It's usually just like a little bit in the afternoon, but it helps me de-stress after work. And I think tennis is definitely something that as soon as the courts are open, my husband and I love playing tennis together and get active. But uh, my favorite positive habit, I think, that we've built, my husband and I even together, is to really think about what we're grateful for. So each day we sit down together, um, most of the times it's in the afternoon, but sometimes it's in the morning. And we really like to just think about 
what are three things that we're thankful for today? And so, for example, last night we sat down together and I'll share with you all the three things that we said we were thankful for are the friendships that we're developing here um, in our move to Germany. I think we've really built some great friendships and we're really thankful for that. We tried a new pumpkin soup recipe <laughs> for dinner, which ended out being really good. So we were thankful for that. And our favorite thing from yesterday, we were so excited that we finally got our bed frame. So we've been sleeping on a mattress on the floor for the last month, but yesterday the frame was delivered and we were very thankful that we were going to have our first night in a real bed in a long time. So um, that is what we were, were thankful for yesterday. And I think to kind of force ourselves to stop um, thinking about what we need, what we want, what's missing, or like you said, you know, the negativity in the world and the news, um, even on social media and just really pause and think what's going right. Um, what am I thankful for? Even our health, like that's a huge thing. If we woke up today and we can work, that's huge. And we have so much to be thankful for in that. So those are just a few of the small things I do. Um, they really don't take up a lot of time, but they do make a really big difference for, for me and for us. Wow. I really like that suggestion on the three things you are thankful for. Really powerful. Mm -hmm. And I guess, you know, we live in challenging times and, and the human mind in general is more prone to look for the challenges than yeah. for the opportunities. Yet even these times, as you just alluded to as well, in the three things that, that you were thankful for, offer great opportunities. Yeah. So really powerful. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Christian. Well, before we end our time together today, I would just really appreciate to hear maybe some closing thoughts on this subject for you, or if you have any encouragement for our Shanker people. Yeah, I guess reflecting on that, Marina, um, happiness can be cultivated. Yeah. But it takes people to be interested and determined to make it happen. Mm -hmm. It is probably pretty much like doing sports or any art form. The more you practice at it, the better you become at it. True. Everyone obviously has a different starting point, And there are many small steps that can be made, which allows us all to be more optimistic. And with that, in turn, we will drive a clearer mindset. And with a clearer mindset, you support progress a lot faster. Yeah. I guess I would like to encourage all of us to find our happy things, and those are very personal, and start putting them into practice on a daily basis, mm -hmm. whether that be in the sports arena, whether that be meditation, whether that be virtual calls with friends, whether that is going out with friends, whatever brings you joy. And I guess you don't need to wait for things to be perfect before you are happy. I guess yeah, there's, there's still point. maybe a mystery with many people that things need to be perfect for you to be happy. That is absolutely not the case. Mm -hmm. You can be happy today and create your own reality. Yeah. Our energy and positive outlook will impact the way we feel, the way we think, our teams, our customers, and will positively impact our business. Our positivity has a, therefore a ripple effect please remember that yeah. today just try sending a praise or a thank you to somebody have a non-transactional conversation with a colleague or start your meeting with a big smile it mm. will make a difference you don't need to do big things there's small steps that you can take and every time you take them they provide an incremental progress towards happiness wow i can we, yeah, can we just start our meetings with a smile? Thank you, Christian. That's really cool, really simple, it makes a big difference. Thank you so much. And just thank you for your time, you know, for your insights, for sharing your life with us, your thoughts, your best practices. Um, and thank you for bringing this idea to po of positive psychology to our lives, right, and to our thinking. So for those of you listening today who are interested in learning more about this topic, we would really recommend that you also read the book the Happiness Advantage by Sean Aker. I have also read it, super recommended. It's short and it's powerful. So we'll link it below and we'll also link his TED talk here so that you can watch and enjoy that as well.
I certainly feel energized and inspired today after my time with you, Christian. So thank you so much. Thank you, Marina, for having me. It, uh, it was a real pleasure. And this is a topic that, that clearly is close to my heart. And I do hope that uh, people get some advantage from it as well. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you all for listening in with us today. We hope that you feel inspired and encouraged and ready to find your positive best practices, or as Christian said, your happy things that work for you and that you can really start to implement those in your daily life. We would really like to know what are some of the things that you do that make a small, that are small, but they make a really big difference. So if you could drop a note in our comment section below, sharing what those things are for you in your life, then we can all share in this conversation together. For more insightful learning bits, check us out again on the next episode of the Develop 360 podcast.